my screen is visible or not and uh, yes okay is my screen visible boys and girls yes sir okay thank you so yes sir okay thank you very much the pretty powerpoint presentation is going to get open and here it is so yesterday we talked about an overview of gst today also we are going to talk about an overview of gst so this is the point of discussion today boys and girls as we have taken gst the full form of gst is more than services tax we have seen that there are three or four sub bits four uh, sub acts are also made on 1st july 2017 and those were made for sgst cgst utgst and igst i have already told you the meaning of sgst ugst uh, sorry cgst utgst and uh, igst sgst stands for state goods and services tax cgst stands for central goods and services tax whereas uh, UTGST stands for uh, Union Territory, that is, uh, we call it Marathi, Kendra Shashit Pradesh, Madhu, uh, Goods and Services Tax, Kalaadato, Kyaas Kalaadato, Kalaapan Gaon, so UTGST. And uh, when it is, um, when there is a transaction between two different states, for example, Maharashtra and Karnataka, then IGST is applicable. IGST stands for Integrated Goods and Services Tax. So similar sort of things we guys have seen yesterday, and in today's session. We are going to talk about rest of the things, and um, I hope I'll try to cover in today's session whatever I want to talk about uh, introductory part or the overview part of goods and services tax. So, with your kind permission, I'm going ahead. So, whatever we have seen, that was the part of just introduction, uh, which we have seen in yesterday's session. Now, we are going to talk about the today's aspects, and the aspects that we are going to see in today's session is. We are going to see about what is this. As I told you, GST is a combined tax, or sorry, consumption tax, which is charged on the consumption. Uh, if we consume, then it is applicable. And as I told you, it is an example of indirect tax. Why it is called as indirect? I have told you the difference between direct and indirect in my study session. So once again, I will tell you in a brief manner. Why goods and services tax is called as indirect tax? Because there is one reason uh, for calling indirect tax because um, the customer who is buying to uh, going to buy a goods or services is not going to pay the taxes directly. He pay uh, taxes on behalf of uh, sorry the, to the seller or the dealer, and dealer will pay the amount of tax on behalf of the customer to the government. This is the procedure of paying the tax or uh, paying the tax of goods and services. So that is called as, or this is all, it is called as goods and service uh, indirect taxes because there is no direct role of customer or consumer in paying the taxes on behalf of the consumer or customer, dealer or seller will pay the tax to the government. So in between the government and the taxpayer, there is one person which is called as middleman and that middleman is nothing but what? Sealer or dealer. So sailor or dealer will pay the amount of tax to the government and this is what it is called as indirect tax. But in case of direct tax, what happens? Uh, suppose uh, if we want to pay income tax, then income tax is paid by the taxpayer directly to the government. So this is the difference between direct and indirect. Uh, when it comes to Marathi, if I want to tell you the concept of direct and indirect in Marathi, direct tax payment is direct to taxpayer karatastu. Indirect tax payment ha seller karatastu, the consumer check kuma customer chavatini. There is a thin line of difference between uh, direct and indirect. Forget about that. We are going to get the information regarding GST today. So goods and services tax, that is GST, is an indirect tax, sorry, indirect tax or consumption tax. Why it is called as consumption? There is one reason. And because of that reason, it is called as consumption tax. Consumption tax means what? It is based on consumption. If we are going to consume something, if we are going to buy something, then it is called as consumption tax, remember. Then consumption tax levied in levied in India on the supply of goods and services. If goods and supplies, uh, if the sorry, if the goods and services are supplied by the dealer, by the seller, and if we guys have taken, if we guys have consumed goods, if we guys have uh, consumed services, then we need to pay indirectly. And whatever tax we pay on getting services and goods from certain people, that is called a GST. GST is levied at every step in the production process. 
but it is meant to be refunded to all parties in the various stages of production other than the final consumer. See, GST is not charged at the final stage of the consumption. It is charged at a different stages of uh, production. For example, as we know that we manufacture goods in the company, then that goods is sell, uh, goods is uh, sold to the distributor for the uh, distribution purpose. So this one is the first stage. Manufacturing stage is the first stage. Then uh, goods are distributed to the distributors. So distribution is the second stage. Then distributors will sell uh, will sell that goods to dealers or wholesalers. So that is another stage. Then wholesaler will sell that goods to retailer. So that is another another stage. And the last stage what? Retailer will sell that goods to the consumer. That is the final stage. So see, in every stage GST is charged. See, in every stage GST is charged, but whatever amount is collected as GST till the final stage. What is the final stage? Final stage is there between the retailer and the consumer. So see, the final amount of GST is to be paid by the consumer and that will be given to the government. Remember, but the GST which is paid by the manufacturer, the GST which is paid by the distributor, the GST which is paid by the wholesaler, the GST which is paid by the retailer will be refunded to them. See, this one is not a you know, multi-stages tax. No doubt it is a multi-stages tax. But at the same time, this one is not having the cascading effect. Double taxation is not there. So whatever GST is paid by the manufacturer, whatever tax GST is paid by the wholesaler, distributor and retailer, that will be refunded to them because finally GST is paid by the consumer or the customer. We people have to pay the GST. And whatever paid by them, that will be refunded in terms of what? ITC, input tax credit. They get certain amount of refund of GST, which is called as input tax credit, remember. And this way we can call it GST is paid by the end user or by the final consumer at the final stage of the consumption. So this is what uh, uh, GST is there. GST is one indirect tax for the entire country. As we can have seen that GST is a one nation tax or one tax for one nation. No, now we don't have any other indirect taxes with us. All those indirect taxes were removed or abolished by the country or by the nation. And now there is one nation, one tax. And this is what is GST is called as one nation, one tax. Moving on to the next one. And there we are going to see something different. The Goods and Services Act was passed in the parliament on 29th March 2017. The act came into force from 1st July or on 1st July 2017. Goods and Services Tax Law in India is comprehensive, multi-stage, destination-based tax that is levied on every value addition. Listen, so this is the, the entire background of GST as we know that um, as we can have the study also we can have talked about this. The This particular act is passed by the government of India in the parliament of India on 29th March 2017. The act is passed, the bill is passed by both the houses of parliament on 29th of March 2017 that is Lok Sabha and uh, Rajya Sabha. And, uh, one particular act is made by the government of India and that act is uh, enforced or came into force or came into effect from 1st July 2017. And uh, as far as the scope of this particular act, which is called as Goods and Services Tax Act 2017, the scope is very comprehensive. As I told you, this one is called as multi-stage taxation. This one is also called as consumption-based taxation. It is also called as destination based taxation and the when it comes to levy of taxes, it is levied on every value addition. Suppose see uh, the price which is charged by the manufacturer to the distributor is different. The price which is charged by the distributor to the wholesaler is different. The price which is charged by the uh, wholesaler to the retailer is different. And the price which is charged by the retailer to the final consumer is different. So at every stage of transferring the goods, value is going to be added or amount is different or price is going to be added. So whatever addition is taking place on that, this uh, GST is charged, remember. And uh, final payment of tax will be done 
at the final stage whatever amount is paid in terms of taxes by the wholesaler retailer manufacturer and so on that will be refunded so this is for a lot multi stages destination based consumption based type of tax okay moving on to the next one and that could be the last one in simple words goods and services tax that is gst is an indirect tax levied on the supply of goods and services as i told you this one is a a uh, type of indirect taxes which is levied on goods and services this law has replaced many indirect tax laws that previously in, existed in india yesterday we have seen what sort of taxes we had before the introduction before the existence of gst we guys have seen what sort of uh, state taxes were there what sort of central taxes were there we guys have seen everything in yesterday session there is no need to explain those things again so this one is just a type of one indirect tax for one nation and uh, this is what we can call it gst is one indirect tax for the Three tier and two tier. So means what changes? Means what types they have made? Slots. And here, this GST is called as multi-tier taxes. So what are they? Which are they? That also we are going to see. Goods and services are divided into five tax labs. So tax labs they have made for collection of tax. And those labs are five zero percent on which there are certain products on which zero GS zero percent GST is charged. Then five percent charge. 12% charge 18% charge and 28% charge so these are the tax slabs for the purpose of collection of gst so gst is charged on uh, five different categories or by making five different tax slabs those which we have which we are discussing the gst council has fitted over 1300 goods and 500 services under four tax slabs so zero forget about zero now that is exempted that is nil rated we are not going to talk about nil rated uh, goods we are going to see what is nil rated uh, there is one particular beat for nil rated gst that also we are going to see but here uh, the gst council has fitted 1300 goods means they have taken 1300 different types of goods under the category or under the banner of gst and 500 services under four tax slabs of 5% 12% 18% and 28% under gst so those uh, multi tier system is given here uh, under 0% tax rate some items they have given 50% of the consumer price basket including the food grains those are uh, taken under the category of 0% then uh, 5% which are their mass communicate mass consumption items like spices and mustard oil uh, for spices we call it masala in marathi then for 12% processed foods whatever uh, processed foods we take on those uh, processed foods we take 12% or we pay 12% then uh, 18% that is soaps oil toothpaste refrigerator and smartphones 28 while uh, sorry white goods cars 20% then luxury cars pan masala tobacco then uh, drinks and so on so these are the things which we have Uh, considered under the multi-tiered system, uh, certain changes are also made in this. Whenever we go for actual content of IGST, then I will tell you what sort of changes are taken to this. So this one is just sort of information I'm giving about GST, what GST is exactly and how it is uh, there in India. So you should have that sort of knowledge also instead of going for directly IGST. This is what first two three lectures I'm taking. on introduction of gst and basic knowledge of gst which is called as an overview of gst uh, when it comes to igst we are going to see each and every point in a detailed manner without fail and uh, i hope you will like those things also
Then here we are talking about GST slabs as we have talked about exempted GST rate or zero rate or no tax, 5%, 12%, 18%, 28%. So these are the slabs which they have made for the purpose of GST collection on goods and services. Whatever goods and services we come across for those uh, goods and services, they have made five different slabs. First one is exempted one, that is new rated one, no tax one, 5%, 12%, 18%, and 28%. So these are the five different slabs for the purpose of GST collection. Then uh, exempted GST rate slab, no tax. Uh, and uh, this one is called as what, uh, no tax. So 7% goods and services fall under this category. Out of total percent of goods and services, out of those total percentages of goods and services, 7% goods and services fall under this category. Under the category of what? Under the category of exempted GST rate slab or no GST tax or no GST rate. So here uh, certain things they have given and uh, what are those things? Those I'm going to tell you in a brief manner. Some of these that are regular consumption include fresh fruits, and vegetables, milk, buttermilk, curd, natural honey, flour, basin, bread, all kinds of salt, sugary, pulp, cereal grains. So, so many things are there. And uh, on those kind of things, they do not charge anything else. And this is what this is called as what? Exempted GST, red slab, or no tax slabs. I hope you guys have understood. So, whatever we use in our day to day life, and uh, basically they have clearly mentioned what are exempted and what are not exempted. So near about uh, 1000 uh, items are here that uh, are uh, exempted from GST. Then 5% GST rate slabs. Under the 5% GST rate slabs, 14% of goods and services are covered. Out of 100%, 14% goods and services are uh, fall under this category. So if it is 100, then 40% are there for 5%. If it is 100, then 7% so are there for exempted. So here in this case of 5% GST rate slabs, certain uh, certain items are covered, goods and services, such as you know packaged food items, cream, skimmed milk, powder, branded paneer, frozen vegetables, coffee, tea, spices, pizza, bread, plus rusk. Uh, Shabudana is also there that you like cashew, nut, cashew, nut in shell. So many things, or these are the items which are covered under the category of 5% GST rate slabs. And uh, this is what it is called as 5%. When we talk in terms of percentage out of 100%, 14% are covered under this category. And for previous one, that was 7%. I hope you all are understanding. If I hope you all are listening. Are you listening or not? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, give me one second. So this is for the second category or second uh, GST rate slab and that was for 5% GST rate slab. Another one is here that is 12% GST rate slab. So as far as this 12% GST rate slab is concerned, 17% of goods and services fall under this category out of 100%. And uh, under this uh, particular 12% GST rate slab, uh, there are certain items they have taken. And those items are here that I have given, like, you know, frozen meat products, butter, cheese, ghee, dry fruits in packaged form, animal fat, and then sauces, fruit juices, namkeen, ketchup, and sauces also, Ayurvedic medicines, all diagnostic kits and uh, collagens cell phones, spoons, forks, so many things that are covered. There are so many things that we cannot imagine also because uh, we guys have not come across with all those things. So those are covered. So here under the category of 12%, 17% of all types of goods and services are covered and uh, that we know. Hello? Okay. Next one, next category is 18% GST rate slab. Under this 18% GST rate slabs, out of 100%, 43% of goods and services fall under this category. And as far as the items are concerned, so many items they have covered, and such as 
pasta, biscuits, cornflakes, uh, flakes, pastries, and cakes. Whatever we take outside, we don't, never realize how much uh, percent of GST we are paying on those items. So these are the things that are covered, go through the contents. And so many contains, so many examples I have, we have taken here. When we talk in terms of percentage out of 100%, 43% of goods and services fall under this category of slab. Next one is here and that is the last one. And that is the luxury category. And what is this luxury category that also we are going to see. Uh, as far as 28% GST right slab, 19% of goods and services fall under this category. Whatever services we take or goods services we take out of those. If it is 100, for example, then out of 100, 19% of goods and services fall under this category of 28% GST right slab. So when it comes to the examples, there are different... Uh, uh, examples they have given or different types of items and services are included such as um, chewing gum we never realize we go for chewing gum and uh, we pay 28 percent of GST on chewing gum biddy that is biddy uh, then cigar cigarettes are also there so these are the things chocolates uh, containing coca and wafers are also there so many things are covered just go through the shampoos, dye, hair shampoo, hair dyes, sunscreen lotions, then paints, and then water heater. So many what we take for the purpose of luxury, for the purpose of prestige and all. Those are covered under this category of 28% GST red slab. So this one, these are the sort of examples that we can understand. And that they are under the category of 28% GST red slab. Moving on to the next one, and uh, here we are going to see multi-tiered system. And uh, why it is called a multi-tiered system? Because uh, they go for, or we go for different types of stack slabs. As we guys have discussed, there are uh, five types of slab, tax slab, 0%, 5%, 12%, 18%, and 20%. With examples I have given here, uh, if you want to buy a car, then it comes under the category of 28%. So if you want to go for a cigar or tobacco or alcoholic product, then we need to pay 28%. So these are the just part of our tax labs and there we can understand uh, how it is multi-tiered, how it is multi-stages and uh, multi-slabs or GST rates are also created to make it fair. So these are the multi-tiered system of GST. And from that, we can also understand how it is, you know, better for the country and why it is called as a one nation, one tax. Then GST rate on other items. Just now I have given this. Go through this. And here you can understand what are the items under the category of 0%, what are the items under the category of 5%, what are the items under the category of 12%, what are the items under the category of 18%, and what are the items under the category of 28%. So category wise items you can see here and you may understand what sort of things that we get it. Then components of GST as we know this components of GST one more is missing here but I will tell you orally. So there are basically there are three types applicable under this system. Actually, one more is there, and that is UTGST, which is not mentioned. There are four tax types of taxes which are collected through, or that we can cover under the SGST. You see, uh, these are the types of taxes which are covered, or that that are those can be called as components of GST. SGST, CGST, IGST, and under the category of AGST, UTGST is also there because we have states in our country and we have union territories in our country. Uh, states when they and even territory when they can Pradesh. So whatever rules are applicable for GST, those rules are also applicable for UTGST. So there are four, CGST, SGST, UTGST and IGST. So uh, CGST means what, uh, what happens with this particular component that also I'm going to tell you. Collected by the central government on intrastate transaction happening within the Maharashtra or any state. And this particular tax will be collected by the central government in case of what intrastate, I'm going to tell you what is intrastate and interstate in a, in 
a precise manner and in a you know in a very uh, broader manner so forget about that do not get into the confusion i'm going to explain the concept of intrastate and interstate in a precise manner in days to come then sgst collected by the state government on intrastate transaction happening with our, that particular state then igst collected by the central government for interstate sale uh, for example the sale which is taking place between maharashtra and karnataka or tamil nadu or whatever it is so this is called what sgst cgst and uh, utgst and uh, igst so these are the four different components and major components and on each component separate act separate act is made by the uh, central government ya pratyek component varti ek vegla act tar karne dalela hai tya sathi mi tumhala mhatle na ka cgst act 2017 sgst act 2017 utgst act 2017 and igst act 2017 so igst is the topic of discussion moving on to the next one and here we are going to talk about gst and uh, under the gst when it comes to intra state there are three when it comes to intra state means within the state only intra state means what within the state rajyatle rajyamadhes sell within the state sgst cgst and uh, one more that is utgst when it comes to inter state within two states or sell outside the state for example maharashtra sold goods to karnataka so this is called what intra state between two state it is been uh, what does it mean the sale is taken place between or the transaction is taken place between two different states for example maharashtra and karnataka and for that kind of transaction we call it inter state and for that igst is applicable when it comes to intra state it can be done within the state only for example transaction is taken place between pune and baramati So this is called what intrastate, and uh, for that uh, we call it uh, SGST and CGST both are applicable. So this is the thing that we will have seen today. Now the advantages of GST. What are the advantages of GST that also we are going to discuss here? As far as the advantages of GST are concerned, there are different advantages of GST. For example, the first one is what regulating the unorganized sector. As we know that uh, in Previous indirect tax regime, it was possible for unorganized sector to avoid taxes or to they were not used to pay taxes. But now because of this GST, that is also covered. Unorganized sector is also covered, and it has also regulated. And uh, because of this kind of regulation, there also the taxpayers and they are paying taxes. And when they pay taxes, definitely there is a benefit or there will be a revenue for the state or central government in both the cases so lesser compliances as far as the compliances are concerned there were so many compliances in previous indirect taxes because the number was huge but here in case of gst as we call it gst is a one nation one tax so lesser compliances are there and uh, the work is reduced actually the fact is different but as far as this point is concerned i can say the work is reduced and uh, lesser compliances are there in case of gst then removing cascading effect or tax effect definitely it has been done there is no double taxation cascading means for double taxation for the same things we are we are not here to pay tax two times so we need to pay tax at once only so that is called as what yes cascading effect cascading means what we used to pay taxation in double system or twice no no upon taxes for it so that is totally removed there is no chance to go for cascading effect here then higher threshold for registration as far as registration is concerned if you want to register your business for gst at least you should have 20 lakhs turnover in a year you should have a turnover of 20 lakhs in a financial year and that is expected and uh, when it comes to the turnover it is definitely higher simple and easy online process now the entire work of gst is online there is no offline process as such so people are trying to understand and most of the people they are literate if they deal with the gst and because of that the work is simple there is no need to go anywhere efforts are reduced then money is also saved this is what uh, simple and easy online process we can call it then defined treatment for e-commerce operators treatment is also defined in gst for e-commerce operators those who are doing the business of e-commerce operator what is e-commerce operator that i can tell you or i will tell you in days to come 
when we go for precise manners about IGST. So there I will tell you. So the treatment which is there for e-commerce operator is totally defined by the um, GST. Then improved efficiency of logistics. And um, when it comes to logistics which is useful for the business, that is also improved. And the last one, composition scheme for small businesses. Um, there are certain composition schemes which are there under the GST for small business organizations and those are useful for them as far as GST is concerned. So some certain composition schemes are developed or created under the GST which are much useful, more useful for the purpose of small business organizations. So these are the advantages. One more small point is left that we are going to cover and those are disadvantages. When it comes to disadvantages, as we know that for every coin, there are two sides. One is positive, second one is negative. So positive side, positive side we have seen. Now we are going to see negative side. What is that negative one? Look at this. There are certain disadvantages of GST. The first one is increased cost due to software purchase. We need to have software with us. And uh, because of this, buying a software for your business, definitely it has incre increased the cost of your expenditure then begin gst complaint now people are getting complaints about gst and how gst is not suitable for the business and so on so people have started complaining about the gst and the entire system of gst and what will happen i we also don't know even chartered accountants are also complaining about the gst system third one it came into effect in the middle of the financial year. Businesses may find it hard to get adjusted. As we know that it was implemented from 1st July 2017. So it was there for that particular year. But now that this one is not, uh, you know, in nowadays it is not that much a sort of advantage. Then SME, that is small, medium uh, scale industries, will have a higher tax burden these industries are paying more taxes to the government as the fee and the last one it is an online taxation system remember as i told you everything is online mm, nothing is offline in this particular tax system everything is online so businesses are now switching from from paying and people invoicing and filing on to online written filing and making payments and this might be though for um, some smaller businesses to adapt to. So as I told you, it is online and we need to have knowledge of online and it is not that much possible for small business organization to go for online things. They used to do their business with pin and paper. But uh, nowadays, because of this online system, they should have to appoint one person to handle the online matters or online issues. And this is what it is not that much suitable for small business organization. When it comes to uh, a large business organization or the big business organization, for them it is okay. But as far as small business organizations are concerned, this is not that much suitable as such. So these are the advantages, sorry, disadvantages of GST, which we guys have seen. And uh, moving on to the next one, I hope you will ask your questions. So today we have covered, or today and yesterday we have covered all the introductory part of GST and uh, I hope you guys have understood all those aspects. Now the your turn. If you would like to ask some questions, you can ask your questions. If you do not want to ask, then I will say like that you guys have you guys haven't understood anything else. If you ask some questions, I may say that you guys have understood something. So this is from my end and I stopped my presentation here and I'll get back to the main slide okay now you can ask your question